I'm Sir Tap Tap. Let's play Redimmed for Z. Review Cup. This game is provided. Parker. Parker. Review Cup. This game is provided by the developer, which so happens to be a Swedish couple. Hence the game's name. The game's name just means space trip. I have been told. Um, the developer, who is you know just that couple, happens to be Morgan Dog, Dag. I think. I apologize for butchering all of the Swedish words in this game. Um, I did not pick that bonus. Whatever. We're going to start off in a ship that's a little more survivable. Uh, a lot more survivable. You died. Watched it explode. Watched it burn. Observed the explosion. Observed the fire. Thinking of you. See, this ship is basically more than twice as survivable as the starting free ship. This does cost some space points at the top right there each time we use it, but it's pretty nice. Um, the biggest benefit of this ship is eliminating a very frustrating feature of this game where the game just decides, nah, I'm just gonna kill you. Um, it's a roguelike, um, so I mean that's kind of a feature of roguelikes, but in my opinion, the best roguelikes don't kill you instantly just by pure random chance. Um, you see, I'm not gonna pick up... Okay, so what that is, is a dead ship from a prior spaceship. From a prior attempt here. They usually drop bonuses, but when I tried recording last time, it dropped a mine that did 400 damage and immediately tracked me and I could not avoid. Um, I was not happy about that. It's... Uh, there's a couple other things this game can do just randomly completely kill you and what's even more annoying is I was having a good time I've been playing this for a few hours today had a lot of really great runs and then the moment I sit down to record I go oh hey free item from this derelict spacecraft and then I explode instantly and then I lost my expensive spacecraft that's a new one and I had to go and grind space points just to be able to show this off, because I wanted, I really did want this craft because it's less prone to instant death. Um, but yeah, that, you know what's annoying? Um, every single space exploration roguelike seems to do that. FTL does that, this game does that, Out There does that. Just random 50 50 chance of choosing the wrong thing, and your ship basically explodes. I mean, depending on how he hefty your ship is, usually the bad stuff will only, quote unquote, only deal about 200 to 300 damage. Um, but the starter ship only has 300 HP. Um, this ship has 600, so it can survive most of those screw yous. Um, but one I found did a thousand damage, and I'm not sure there's any ship that I've unlocked yet that can survive that. Um, so yeah, there are stats in this game, as you can see here. Uh, we'll explain that in a bit. So, um, despite my obvious frustration, I do like this game actually very much. Um, it takes a lot of explaining, so I'm going to try to explain bit by bit here. So basically, we're a spacecraft. We got a mission here. There is a very drab atmosphere, um, as you might have noticed from that introduction. Um, they sell it as sort of a having a poetic feel to it as we go more years in space our pilot will have some diaries and have some revelations about stuff and a lot of the discoveries you make on planets are very morbid there's generally no other living beings there's you know lots of introspection um and it creates a very drab atmosphere and does it very well as you might notice um the area names are also very drab, and they have... So we've got... Our current area is Newton's Vacuum. Um, it has a little flavor text of Turn to Continuum. Oh god, oh god, okay. You know what's funny? These mines deal almost no damage, only 30 damage. If you hit an asteroid, it's like over 100 damage, and like, asteroids will just completely ruin your day constantly in the starter ship. So... See, so yeah, these mines are kind of a joke. So... As we're going through all this grim space stuff, um, oh crap, sun's hurt. 
It must be written. I've been thinking, and I've come to the conclusion that I need to make a list. A list including everything. Oh, cool. Every little detail. Lists. They can be good but legendary. Really good. As a consolation, like little rays of sunshine. Crap. And channels of order in one's life. Alright, so that was one of our little poetic diary thingies. Um, honestly, the diaries don't do too much for me in general. Um, this is something frustrating. Um, that item we got just dropped six consumable items, and it dropped them in the middle of a sun. We got three, out, or we got four out of six, so that's, we're gonna count that as a victory. It was usually dropped two, so I was very surprised. We also got a legendary item, let's check that out. Um, greatly worse acceleration. Significantly better item finding, that's all we care about. So, ah, this game's so complicated, I want to explain it bit by bit, and I keep having to show you more complicated things. So, basically we just go around space, and in this beginning um, game type, all you have to do is go find, I think, nine research points. Yeah, nine. So... Basically, it gives you these set events that always give you extra space points and always give you 300 resources, which should be plenty enough resources to go along to the next uh, point. What's this? I don't think that's very good. And it's better than this, though. So, all you have to do... Oops. I shouldn't say all you have to do. It's um, pretty difficult the first time. I love that. That is a great background item. I haven't seen that one before. So there's lots of background items and explorable junk you'll see. Um, anything with a red outline is dangerous. But yeah, so we just want to go and find these nine items. Um, it's a nice, completely linear quest. It has to be all done in one sitting. Um, you'll die very many times trying to do it your first time. It's really not that bad, though. Your main thing is you want to avoid these asteroids. And you want to be sort of careful around planets, um, which is kind of unfortunate. I really wish that there was just no complete I'm just going to kill you outcome from exploration. And it's fairly rare, but the thing about those instant kills, it doesn't really matter how rare you make it. All it has to do is happen once and completely ruin someone's experience with your game. And they may ne never give you a second chance. Uh... Honestly, if I had gotten too many too early, watched it explode. We already that was actually the intro. I'm not sure why I gave why that's a diary too. Every two years you get a diary like that. Oh crap! See, 56 damage. That's pretty significant for the starter ship, and you can take even more than that from an asteroid. Um, I also even have research crap that reduces the damage I take from asteroids. Um, ah crap! Ugh. See, yeah. Um, Asteroid's pretty bad to start with. But yeah, if I had had too many instant kills, I might have just given up on this game, because it's pretty hard to get in to, honestly. Well, not... I don't want to say it quite like that. I mean, it is a roguelike, and it took me about 20 minutes to kind of figure out the barest essentials of what the crap I'm even doing. Um, took me another hour or two to get actually, like, somewhat decent. I think I'm pretty good now, but random stuff can still kill me. Um, a good thing about this mode, though, you should not actually need to visit any planets to, um, complete your quest. You should be able to just go from one point to one point, um, absolutely no side stops. You'll have enough resources as long as, long as you don't hit too many things, and you'll be fine. Um, I wasn't really thinking about the game like that because, you know, I was still exploring it, so... I visited lots of planets, and I blew up a few times, and that's pretty annoying. Also, I have a skill that gives me resources, which are also health. Resources are basically health and fuel at the same time. Um, all these little tiny stardust particles I get will increase my resources a tiny bit and also give me space bucks and experience. Um, wow, that's a lot of them all in one area. Also, um, this game has almost full controller support. Some of the menus, some of the options menus don't actually support controllers, but it, it, it works very well with the controller, and I do recommend it. It's a very Searching. chill game. We haven't understood anything. 
and all what's left to understand is dying. We need another world. Another world to call Ooh. home. It's simple. We want to last. We want to survive. And we want to live. I'm searching for a new chance. A new way to stay alive. Yeah, some of the trying to be poetic moments kind of fall flat. That one's one of my least favorites, honestly. Um, just kind of bludgeons you over the head with fairly obvious, I don't want to die. Um, I'm not a fan of all of the poetic stuff. I like the idea. Um, I don't think it's bad, per se. It doesn't, at least, it's not bad enough to harm the experience, but I don't find it adds too much. I find the, the area names are pretty dang good. The flavor text of the areas, which are all, um, the areas are just basically, um, it's what kind of stuff can spawn, I think. Oh god, no. Um, whatever, I don't need space points. That one let us know what was going to happen, which is pretty rare. Um, it seems to just be a coin flip for the most part, what happens in some of those. Um, what was I saying? I, I think the area at least determines what kind of stuff can spawn. It also is just cosmetic, you know, what the background color is. But it's pretty nice, it gives you more variety to, you know, space, which can be kind of boring. I mean, it's mostly empty. Let's see here, we're in Pegasus, and there's background. There's a bunch of different background and foreground elements that can appear. Um, we're not going to see most of them, because they're a lot of them are fairly rare. And there's some really cool stuff, like giant space spiders. I got... we got a second one of these. Um, see, so yeah, the... This game's very relaxing, and uh, it's sort of the game you want to play maybe while watching something, you know, passively doing something else. You can't just leave it completely unattended because you'll, you know, bump into something or miss something important. Rain. Miss the rain pouring down my cheek. Miss the rain dropping from my eyelashes. Miss the catharsis of rain. Miss the liberation of rain. Miss the happiness. Of rain. Okay, I'm just gonna start muting those so I can keep talking. You you get the point. Um, I'm not entirely a huge fan of the dude's voice either, honestly. It just... It doesn't seem fitting of the drama they're trying to inspire. Um, but yeah, the... It's a very... Oop, very chill, relaxing game. Uh, despite the death, which is kind of surprising. We gotta research. Uh, I guess I'll explain research now. So when you get those little light bulbs, you get one of these 16 items. Um, lockable consumable items, Eric's face jumper. That is a lot of space points. Um, so yeah, these unlock different effects, like that will let us find a consumable item. This will let us take less damage. I got that one very early and it's very good. Um, actually that may be why the asteroids... I'm not sure if that affects asteroids or not. Ow. See that? I think your speed affects how much damage you take. Oh, we're in Researcher's Land. Yeah, that Researcher's Land has lots of research. I found, see, I found two pieces of research within like 20 seconds, which is pretty... In fact, you find research very rarely outside of Researcher's Land. Oop. Um, this is just a random event that just lets you pick something to happen. I just picked consumables because I can use that later. Um, so yeah, addition, re, okay. So the way the this game is roguelikey. Well, I guess, yeah, roguelike. It's not a rogue or no. Sorry, it's roguelite, not roguelike. The way it's roguelite e is that these are all permanent when you research them. Space points are permanent. Uh, resources are not. Inventory, actually, almost everything is permanent. Um, your item, you have consumable items though, and of course if you use them they get used. But all of this inventory stuff is permanent and the next time you use your ship, you know, you outfit a type of ship basically. The, if I, my ship gets destroyed and I use the ship again, I'll have all of my equipment on that new ship. Uh, I do lose whatever I had to pay to get this ship, which is... Not insubstantial. This ship is moderately expensive. Mostly because I have so much other stuff to spend space points on. I'm trying to buy all the research. 
So ships, this ship costs like 1200 As you can see, that's a third of my money. Not too bad, but uh, not what? What just happened? Um, as you can see, we're almost at the end of our journey. This took me about an hour to do the first time. Uh, multiple attempts, obviously. But yeah, the... There's a lot that carries over, which uh, lets it be a lot less frustrating than it could be. Because death is fairly common. Um, in addition to our inventory, we have, you know, we have these different types of slots. Um, they all affect different stats. I don't have anything super major game changey, but uh, I have some stuff that helps me find more items, travel faster, have a few more resources. Uh, I don't have a shield, which seems like one of the most significant items in the game. I unlock the ability to find shields, but I've gone a couple hours without finding a shield. So I'm a little annoyed at that, but uh, I've been surviving mostly because I use this ship, which, you know, can take a pretty hefty beating. In addition to items, you also have your pilot level, which lets you increase, you know, quest drops. These see all seem fairly minor, point by point. Like, 0.5% quest success rate, that's kinda... Eh. Um, but we also get... Uh, that one's also pretty... Oh, the star's experience seems sort of significant. Um, I'm not sure how much experience it takes to level, so I, maybe I shouldn't say that. Technology allows you to use stuff. I got 25 exactly because tech 25 lets you use warp gates, which are fairly risky to use. They cost, they only cost 30 experience or 30 resources, I think. But they can just throw you somewhere completely random and pointless. And like, I got thrown like, oh dang, I'm really far away from home. Um, I got thrown like 45 sectors in either direction, and. Um, this happened to be in the mission where I have to bring back resources to coordinate zero zero, so that was no good. And in this this particular game type, you have to go to specific locations, so the warps really are probably aren't going to do you any good. Probably do significantly more harm. But you can warp back. Like the warps are all two way. It would just cost you, I think, just sixty resources, which is not that much in this ship, but it is. 20% of the starting ship's resources. So that's pretty brutal. Oop. See, these things are so weak, I barely even care about hitting them. And I get healed by all of these stars, so that's fine. So we're coming up real close on finishing this mission, so I guess I'll go ahead... Hang on. This is going to be so easy, I'm just going to go ahead and get some of these extra stars. Gosh. Uh, so... In addition to our stats, there are different ships, as I've mentioned a few times now. This is the tanky ship. The starting ship is completely free, but just all around sucks. Um, and it's part of why you'll die a lot. See, as you can see, I have, I've have i lost about 300 resources. I would probably be dead by now if it were not for my, you know, tanky ship. Wait. There's no way... Oh, okay. Yeah, by beating that game type, we unlocked the a new home game type. I've already gotten it before. Um, but yeah, let's look at our ships quick. So, basic crappy ship. Uh, slower, but significantly tankier ship. Um, the reduced top speed <laughs> barely matters. This thing is really freaking weird. It has great pickup radius and better acceleration, which helps it dodge. Um, it's great for picking up lots of stars and stuff. Um, not entirely practical. It's okay for this chapter two mission type, but it's not very useful for mission one. And this one's just really fast and has lots of boost. I haven't even used boost. Um, we're just gonna go for the turtle. I don't have, these are the extra super expensive ships. I haven't used any of them, honestly. Um, I'm not really sure how worth it any of them are, because I haven't tried them out. Um, oh, dang. Reduced damage from impact sounds pretty amazing. And 1,000 resources? Okay, yeah, that ship sounds pretty worth it. Yeah, 
Yeah, those are pretty good, but I don't have the space points to waste until... At least until I have all the research. A new chance. Pioneers inhabit this new world of ours. Operating in new areas. Discovering. Creating a new history. This time, we'll get it right. So yeah, at the end of our last mission, we found a new Earth. And so now what we gotta do is find resources. And this mission has permanent progress, as you can as you can see there. I already had a bunch of materials on Earth, or New Earth, I guess. So we got a fairly minor amount of space points and did pretty pretty significant amounts of damage. Oh yeah, see some of these exploration things I kind of like. Um, the diary it's mostly the diary stuff that kind of falls flat on my ears. Also, if you see trails of stars like this, it usually leads to, uh, I'm not sure what that thing that requires 25 technology is. It usually leads to a batch of stars. I think we already saw the batch of stars. But if you see those trails, feel free to follow them. Um, materials will show up as green blobs, and materials can also show up... <laughs> we just got a material, or, uh, achievement and a bunch of space points for hitting a rock. Um... Achievements will be your primary source of space points in the beginning. It gives you... There's a bunch of fairly... Ah. I... What? It's kind of annoying. Sometimes you'll get a pro two prompts in a row and I just accidentally double pressed confirm. Um, it should kind of like... Ignore your input for a second or something. Because like... X is move, and it's also confirm, so that causes some issues. Uh, controls are very simple, mostly just move, or you point in a direction and you press accelerate. Found a nice little engine here. There's also little scraps of flavor text around here, like the silence, and uh, ow. Actually not ow. Those things are pathetic. They deal almost no damage. It's kind of sad. Uh, whoop. Stars do not deal little damage. Do not get near the star. Um, fun fact, you can actually just boost straight through a star. Um, like, actually contacting the star isn't what hits you. There's this timer when you're within that red radius that will damage you every couple seconds. So now that we've got over 100 resources, we should probably head back home. Alright, boost lets you go well over double your maximum speed. It is an incredibly great way to die, especially in the starter ship. This ship is pretty boost safe because you have all the extra resources. Um, boosting costs resources in and of itself, um, and it also um, gives you a pretty great chance to just bump head on into a friggin' asteroid, which is usually what will kill you, not actually the boost. Um, so yeah, pretty unsafe, but it also burns extra resources as you're boosting. Um, one thing in movement in this game, I didn't realize at first, once you hit your maximum velocity, there's no point in applying more thrust, because you're just wasting resources at this point. Um, though, I actually have a micro boost feature now that I've unlocked that lets me, after that micro boost is full, I will go over my top speed, I think by 20%. As long as I keep wasting resources, and it's fairly expensive, but it's more controlled than the boost. And in a ship like this, I have the resources to waste, frankly. See, so yeah, in this game type, you just kind of wander around and look for resources. And once you're somewhat low on resources, you want to head back. The one problem I have with this game type is you're kind of tethered to home base. You never want to wander too far, because then you might run a res out of resources to get back. There is a consumable item to help you with that. There's an item that just warps you right back home. I haven't unlocked it yet. You can unlock it, like, immediately if that's what you choose, you know, to make this easier. I just didn't because, you know, heading back to home isn't too bad. Oh god. So here we're getting a little risky. See, I don't want to explore that planet because I might take ex in excess of 100 damage if it decides to be mean to me. And I mean, I think it's okay that, you know, if it took, took only maybe a couple of hundred damage, I wouldn't really mind. But when I'm at risk of taking up to like a thousand damage, 
it just makes me kind of not want to explore. Also, a nice feature of this game type, floating around your home base refills your resources. I am not sure what Chapter 3 is exactly. I haven't got to it yet. Um, I guess that's most of what there is to talk about. Hopefully, you understand the game better than I did when I started playing it. But the game is very relaxing. I've spent just a few hours, you know, just playing, relaxing, you know. Maybe watch something in the background, you know. For those times when you're just floating around space. But it's very relaxing and fun and oop. You get some pretty great atmosphere. I have no idea why you'd fly through the rainstorm. Maybe it gives you more experience. Grief. I grieve the loss of the one I once was. See, that one's not too bad. Yeah, as you can see, we... Um, it's fairly safe to collect resources. Or not resources, materials, which is what you need for your planet. You just drain them by going by these explorer points. You don't have to actually explore them, which is what causes the risk. So this game type can be fairly safe. Uh, we're going to level up Earth and be able to select one more permit, unlock Ow. Whatever. We're a tank, so we can take it. Um, but yeah, also the shadow I have here was actually a research item. Uh, it seems entirely useless and looks kind of silly. I'm not really sure why it's even there, but uh, it was very cheap and I eventually need to unlock all research anyway. But yeah, here's some of the things we can unlock permanently. Um, I guess I'll unlock the time warp because otherwise I won't be able to even bother with it. it yeah, we can also see other people in space. I'm not sure if that's going to include hostile people, so that's kind of not what I want right now. And I'm also not sure if the moons are like something I can explore. I kind of assume so. But here's some of the other stuff we got. The first one I got was unlock ship shields. I haven't found one, even though I unlocked that, like, seriously over two hours ago. Um, droids are little consumable thingies. They, I'm kind of disappointed with them. Um, space points every year. You know, just a nice little bonus to help you pick up the expensive ships. Um, my longest run was 35 years in-game. The way years work, to avoid farming, you have to be moving. It's basically a function of distance rather than time, actually. Though you can kind of cheese it just by orbiting Earth. You, um... You know, you're moving, so it just adds to your time. I haven't really bothered cheesing it too significantly. But as you can see, we got, you know, an extra half year just poking around there. Which gives you a little bit extra experience and space points since I unlocked that thing. But yeah, this, that's pretty much what you need to know for Redemption Dracy. Ow. Um, might want to check it out. Just remember, it is, of course, a roguelike and it'll require some learning but yeah I was rather pleasantly surprised it um, this is sort of why I would like to get to my review games a little earlier because this I didn't really bother playing it at release frankly because um, I, I fired it up was super confused and I quit after like 10 minutes or less but let's see we took a lot of damage there um, but now that I've had time to just sit down and play it for longer, I actually rather like it. We're so close to level 10. I won't force you to watch me grind for levels, though. But yeah, this is Redim Drizzy, and it's on Steam. Um, oh, right. It is also coming to iPad, Mac, and Xbox One, and Wii U eventually. At least that's what their email says. I'm not sure of any timeline for any of that. Sort of a weird list of platforms, like excluding PS4 is weird. Mac and or Linux and Windows without Mac is a little weird. Oh, here's one of the cool things. Um, they usually won't be a really awesome like those super weird things, like the giant space tarantula and stuff. They'll usually just be resources. There's not usually an event tied with them. There are ghost ships. Oops. What did I just? I just wasted a shield recharge and I don't have a shield. Dang it. I need to un... I usually remove those consumables. Oh, I can't remove them. <sighs> oh well. I 
fit well out for that. It strikes me. We Yeah, yeah. He just realized his white privilege. Um cool. Let's get that. See, there's lots of pleasant surprises too, like this little burst of star points. The little things. I just really could deal without the sudden death. And it's something you can can mostly avoid if your ship has enough resources. The starting ship just doesn't, so it just explodes, and it's really unpleasant. But yeah, that's really my major... That and the just standard roguelike, you actually have to play it to figure out what the crap you are even doing, which I'm a little less forgiving of than I probably should be, because I don't play many roguelikes, so every time just feels like the same, oh... Damn, I have no idea what's going on, and I get frustrated. Ow. See, that's the risk of boosting. I try not to boost too much. Let's just deliver this crap to Earth. Do not do what I'm doing. I'm burning resources because I know I can get back to home. Um, so I'm just abusing my micro boost here. Oops. And if it wasn't completely obvious, you know, it, all this crap is randomly, or procedurally generated, because, you know, roguelike, roguelite, I, I keep meaning to say roguelite, and I say roguelike. I'm sorry, any purists out there. But yeah, the, oh. Yes, a Parker. You can also re revisit any of the diary entries if you really want to, um, and... The option, oh right, the options don't accept gamepad input, which is frustrating. It even shows the gamepad prompts, but no, it doesn't work. Um, the options aren't bad, they're just fairly simple. There's an auto game, or an auto resolution, which is nice. Um, I guess you can, oh, I haven't even, I didn't even look at this one. I guess you can disable the diary pods. Disable it. Oh. Hide follower. I think that's the pointer? I don't know. Well, that's right, Parker. I guess there's more options than I thought there were. Hmm. Oh, and you can rebind your controls, which is... You can even rebind the gamepad, which some games fail to let you do. Um, I, pl I played on gamepad. It should be easy enough to play with keyboard and mouse. I just works really nice with gamepad. But yeah, that's Redemptor C. I should stop talking now. Isn't that right, Parker? Yeah. He's just looking at me.